put manures and fertilizers after pruning and irrigate regularly. Pomegranate plants produce fresh growth and flowers in one month. If vegetative growth is more and flowers are less, spray 1000 ppm lehosin or 500 ppm melic hydroside. It suppresses vegetative growth and encourages flowering. Flowers are seen on large number on the whole plant, but male and intermediate flowers drop down and only bisexual flowers produce fruit. Too many fruit on the plant result in poor quality. Very heavy crop exhausts the plant, leading to pests and diseases. Hence, crop regulation is practiced to have optimum and good quality crop. Retain 50 to 70 fruits on a healthy plant of 2 to 3 years age. Remove all excess fruits and flowers. Keep 100 to 120 fruits on a big plant of 3 to 4 years age. Increase the crop load as in when the canopy of the plant grows bigger over the years. If you retain more number of fruits exceeding the nourishment capacity of the plant, the fruits become small. It gets rejected for exports and sells at a very less price in the local market. Hence, flower regulation is most important. Sometimes, we may notice dropping of flower and young fruit. Excess soil moisture and nitrogen, a deficiency of those two, create this problem. Otherwise, insufficient rest for the plant or delayed harvest of crop in the last season resulting in the deficiency of phosphorus, calcium and boron or increase in pest and disease lead to flower and fruit drop. Spray 100 ppm NAA solution to solve this problem. Pinch the growing tip of the shoot bearing fruits. It induces branching which protects the growing fruits from direct sun. A plant with good canopy, like this, produces good quality fruits. Open plant of this type exposes the fruit to direct sun, leading to sun burning. Keep on removing flowers on the plant and sprouts at the base during cropping period. This minimizes the wastage of nutrients and water. This is a continuous and inevitable work on the pomegranate farm. Weak shoots bearing fruit may bow down. Put poles all along the length of the plant row and put GI wire. Tie the branches upward to the GI wire with a gunny thread. Spray 10 to 20 ppm gibberellic acid or 1 ml cytozyme in 1 liter of water to improve the size of the fruit and thickness of the skin when 80% of the fruits are at lemon size. Now, let us understand the nutrient requirement for bearing pomegranate plants. Put sufficient quantity of organic manures. Dig a ring around the plant base at one and a half feet distance to put manures and fertilizers. The basal dose per plant after pruning is cow dung manure, 30 kilograms, neem cake, one kilogram, castor cake, 500 grams, Vermi compost, 2 kg, superphosphate, 1 kg, DAP, 500 g, magnesium sulphate, 200 g, borax, 20 g, and forate granules, 25 g. After one month or at flowering, apply ammonium sulphate, 250 g, and 191919 complex fertilizer. 750 grams to each plant. Next dose at lemon size of the fruit is ammonium sulphate 250 grams, DAP 250 grams and potash 250 grams per plant. The last dose of fertilizer at three months after flowering is DAP 500 grams and potash 500 grams per plant. This is the dosage and the schedule if you opt for solid fertilizer application to the soil.
Cover the manures and fertilizers with soil and irrigate regularly. Supplying fertilizers through irrigation water or fertigation is practiced widely in commercial pomegranate plantations now. Water-soluble fertilizers are mixed in this plastic tank. The solution is injected into irrigation pipe with the help of a venturi. Fertigation improves the efficiency of fertilizer supply and absorption. Hence, it reduces total quantity of the fertilizers used. It also saves the labor on fertilizer application to the soil. Face-wise application and liquid form of the fertilizer minimizes the wastage and improves plant growth and yield. Schedule of fertigation is like this.